What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonners. This is the only podcast you need for all of your weekly NXT, NXT UK, WWE and AEW updates. And this week we'll be focusing on AEW, well in this episode anyway. Today is our special AEW All Out pay-per-view predictions episode. We'll be previewing all of the matches looking in detail about the participants and who might end up on the winning end of each of those matches. So for the next half an hour, 40 to 45 minutes, who knows how long this is going to go, we're going to talk about AEW and the up-and-coming pay-per-view All Out, taking place on Saturday night, uh, going into the early hours of Sunday morning, I suppose you could say, if you're a UK listener. Um, but it's taking place from the SEA Centre in downtown Chicago. Um, and yes, can't wait to talk more about that up and coming pay-per-view very, very soon. But as we do at the beginning of every single episode, just going to throw out all the plugs for my usual social media channels. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do. Just go on to Twitter and our handle is at withjohnners underscore pod. That's at withjohnners underscore pod. On Instagram, we're there as well. Just simply search at Wrestling with Johnners. And of course, our ever popular, our ever interactive Facebook community page, Go on to Facebook and search Wrestling With Jonners. And of course, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, if you follow those groups and really want to get behind us and support the podcast and support the Wrestling With Jonners brand, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and shout about the podcast Wrestling With Jonners. This is your only podcast, as I've said, for all of your weekly NXT, NXT UK WWE and AEW needs. We do cover a lot of independent wrestling. Occasionally we have Kieran Reid on to talk about progress. David Anderson is on frequently and he talks about all the independent shows he's been on, uh, been to. So, yeah, so much to listen to on the Wrestling With Jonas podcast. Um, so please spread the word. Tell your friends and tell your family and help to grow this podcast so that we can continue to produce quality content for you guys each and every week. So there's a lot to catch up on with uh, Wrestling With Jonas uh, in this episode and over the next few days. Over the next four days, we'll be producing four podcasts, including this one here. So today, of course, being Thursday night, we're going to be putting out our AEW All Out pay-per-view predictions episode. Tomorrow, Friday the 30th of August, I'll have Kieran Reid back on the show. Where we'll be talking our usual weekly recap of NXT, NXT UK, and all the latest happenings within the world of wrestling. But more importantly, tomorrow is our go-home show. Um, our Road to NXT UK Takeover Cardiff, where we'll be previewing and predicting all the uh, the winners and losers for this coming Saturday's excellent takeover show in Cardiff which I will be at and uh, Kira Reid will be at and uh, a lot of our listeners and followers will be at as well um, on Saturday the 31st I'll be there live in person um, really enjoying myself. Can't wait for NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff. We're going to be previewing that show with Kieran uh, on Friday so that's tomorrow's episode. On Sunday, um, I'll be recording two episodes of the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. One to review AEW All Out. I'll be joined by Ash Crawford and Chris Thornton. You may remember, in fact, I'm probably sure you remember, Chris and Ash joined me in May for AEW's inaugural pay-per-view Double or Nothing. They're back again. They're passionate fans of AEW, as are most of you out there, um, and I uh, can't wait to have Chris and Ash back on the show to cover All Out, and that'll be Sunday afternoon, that'll be dropping. Later on that day, I'll be recording with David Anderson, we'll be covering NXT UK, TakeOver Cardiff, uh, the show that uh, myself and David and one or two others will have been at the night before, and uh, David and I will be covering TakeOver Cardiff in full detail, doing a full review show from all the matches taking place there and all the sights and sounds and atmosphere of uh, the, the show inside the Motor Point Arena in Cardiff, and that will be dropping Sunday as well. So, Keep your fingers on the dials because it's going to be a busy one for Wrestling With Jonas fans tonight. Obviously now you're listening to the AEW All Out preview show. Tomorrow we've got the NXT, NXT UK uh, weekly recap along with our go-home predictions for TakeOver Cardiff. And then Sunday we've got to AEW's All Out review show and NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff review show. So lots to look forward to on the podcast. Did I mention that Wrestling With Jonas now has merch? We now have t-shirts, mugs, phone covers. Um, if you go to 
teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash wrestling with Johnners. That's teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash wrestling with Johnners. Order your t-shirts or piece of merch from Wrestling With Johnna's uh, store before the end of the month, before the end of August, people, and get yourself 10% off any purchase. Uh, do it now. Support the brand and go and buy some merch. And everything's at a reasonable price. T-shirts are only $15.99. You get mugs for, uh, I believe it's about 11 or £12. There's a little bit of shipping on top of that as well. Uh, but I got my Wrestling With Johnna's um, t-shirt. Uh, yes, I had to purchase my own. No freebies coming my way. And it was delivered to my door within less than a week. Anyway, let's have a, a detailed look at all the matches taking place at AEW's all-out pay-per-view. So this is pretty much a, a year to the day, or close to a year, since um, it was kind of a combined show, more of a, an indie effort with contributions from Ring of Honor, where Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks, and one or two others took up kind of a, a challenge, for want of a better word, from Dave Meltzer, where he said that uh, there's no indie show or indie promotion or indie promo promoters could sell out a 10,000-seater arena. So then this sparked uh, an idea in Cody and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega's, Omega's uh, brain to come up with the idea of All In. And it wasn't AEW back then, it was just purely All In with the association of Ring of Honor and uh, other indie promotions. And uh, it was a huge success. And uh, they, they sold out the 10,000-seater arena. I think it was uh, in Chicago as well, and a hell of a show. Um, headlined by uh, Cody versus uh, Nick Aldis um, and uh, Pentagon Jr. versus Kenny Omega with interference from Chris Jericho at the end of that match. So it was an outstanding show. This then um, sparked the idea of AEW and of course AEW launched at the beginning of the year, January 2019. Uh, they announced their first pay-per-view which was Double or Nothing which took place in May and that was a fantastic effort from the group um, and and uh, yeah some excellent matches of course you had the the five star match between Dustin Rhodes and Cody brother versus brother an absolutely outstanding uh, history making match you could say um, and a great wrestling match but also amazing storytelling fantastic psychology um, and and yeah every part of it worked you had obviously the young bucks go up against the Lucha Brothers, and we're going to be talking about uh, their match again at All Out taking place this Saturday night. You had Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho in the main event, and of course John Moxley made his uh, kind of unannounced debut, coming from out of the uh, out of the crowd like he used to when he was Dean Ambrose back in the Shield days. But this time, as uh, John Moxley, Mox, whatever you want to call him, to attack Kenny Omega and uh, Chris Jericho, and then eventually. Um, DDT Kenny Omega on that stack of giant poker chips up on the stage to cap off that excellent night's action. Um, but from there, we've had Fighter Fest, which was kind of like their, their mini pay per view, you could say, um, in June, shortly followed by Fight for the Fallen in July. And that brings us to right where we are now, uh, just a couple of days ahead of AW's All Out pay per view. Um, so yeah, uh, there's about uh, nine matches on the card, including the, the buy-in, the pre-show, and uh, the first match uh, that we're going to talk about is Private Party, um, a tag team comprised of Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn versus Angelico and Jack Evans. So these two teams are very familiar with one another. Private Party have been tagging for a few years now. They're quite a young team. They've wrestled quite a bit together. And the uh, the House of Glory organization based in, in New York. And uh, th this uh, will be their AEW pay-per-view debut, you could say. They were part of the uh, Double or Nothing buy-in uh, battle royal. Um, back in May, and uh, Angelico uh, and Jack Evans went up against the best friends at Double or Nothing. But here they are, they're going to be uh, kicking off the show, almost certainly, uh, the buy-in uh, part of the pay-per-view, which will be live uh, on free-to-air TV. I believe it's on ITV4 from midnight this coming Saturday night, if you're in the UK. Um, now, this is definitely going to be an all-action match. You've got Private Party, who um, are very fast-paced, kind of remind me a little bit of the Street Profits, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, two excellent, very young, up-and-coming wrestlers 
who certainly know their way around the ring against Angelico and Jack Evans, two of the fastest high flyers in the business today. And uh, I know that uh, whenever they're in the ring, pace doesn't slow down for a second. Uh, Jack Evans is a smaller, uh, skinnier type of wrestler, but what he can't do in the ring, uh, especially off the top rope or top turnbuckle, um, is not worth mentioning. And Helico, slightly taller, a leaner figure, uh, but once again, he normally wears kind of like an all-in-one bodysuit. Um, I've seen him wrestle a few times in the UK. Hell of a wrestler. Um, has recently joined the Bullet Club over in New Japan. Um, but when he teams up with Jack Evans, there's always lightning. And uh, these two teams will definitely go at it. Now, I'm siding with Private Party here in this uh, buy out, buy in preview match to kick off the show. Uh, I am siding with Private Party because they've already got a match scheduled on week two of their new TNT show, Wednesday Night Dynamite, where they'll be going up against the Young Bucks in the first round of the AEW Tag Team Tournament to eventually see who becomes the first ever AEW Tag Team Champions. Now, I think that uh, in order for them to have some momentum going into that match on week two of Wednesday Night Dynamite, going up against the Young Bucks, as I've just mentioned, I think that they will be getting the win here. There's no mention of um, if... And Helico and Jack Evans are going to be part of that tournament. I'm sure they will be. But I think that Private Party are definitely a tag team that AEW are looking to get behind in the future. They're definitely an exciting, energetic, very dynamic team. Um, and I think to have them kicking off the show, even if it is on the buy-in, is a very, very sensible move. Um, I think both teams will gel together. I think it's going to be um, amazing action in the ring. And I can't wait to see what Private Party versus Angelico and Jack Evans looks like on the night. It's going to be a really awesome match. High flying, fast paced and a great way to kick off the show. But I'm going for a Private Party win here. The second match that's been announced for the buy-in preview is the 21 woman casino battle royal so we had a, a 21 man casino battle royal to kick off double or nothing back in may you may remember and the winner of this battle royal will receive a match for the inaugural aw women's world championship and that match is scheduled for the first ever tnt show the first ever wednesday night dynamite taking place on the 2nd of october and now the confirmed entrance though there's only about a half the, well, half the 21 how are you going to get half of 21 John you're going to have 10 and a half wrestlers announced but you, the first uh, 10 or 11 wrestlers that have been announced uh, and this is on Thursday evening two days out from the pay-per-view um, they've had uh, 11 people announced so far they are uh, Jazz former WWE um, and Ring of Honor champion of course Teal Piper the daughter of the late great Hall of Famer Rowdy Roddy Piper Eva Lise, who had a fantastic run in uh, Lucha Underground for all four seasons that they were around. Um, big Swole, Ariel Monroe. So you may remember Ariel Monroe was part of the May Young Classic 2018. Now, I don't think she progressed beyond the second round, uh, but it certainly made an impression on the audience there. Um, she did have a tryout with the WWE at the Performance Centre a few months ago. She may well have been offered a contract, but uh, she is... I don't know if she's, she's officially signed with AEW, but she's definitely going to be part of this Casino Battle Royale. And, of course, she is the, the better half of Cedric Alexander, a current WWE performer, of course. Uh, Sadie Gibbs is going to be part of this uh, 21-woman uh, Casino Battle Royale. And Nyla Rose, who made a, a, a big impression um, at Double or Nothing, she's going to be part of this as well. Yuka Sakazaki, who was in the Joshi six-woman match um, in uh, May, double or nothing, is going to be part of this, along with uh, Ali, Brandy Rhodes, uh, the chief brand or chief brandy officer of All Elite Wrestling, of course. Awesome Kong has just been announced as uh, the most recent entrant. Um, I think she pretty much announced herself in a recent interview this week. We were also expecting Aja Kong to be uh, an entrant, whether it's a surprise entrant, whether she comes out as as uh, the 21st person in this Casino Battle Royal. Um, and of course, possibly the favourite for the whole thing. And bearing in mind, we don't know uh, the final nine or ten competitors. But the, the favourite possibly going into this is going to be Dr. Britt Baker. 
better half of uh, of Adam Cole, um, of course, in NXT. And I think Britt Baker is possibly a lot of people's favourite going into this. And to be honest with you, at the moment, I think she's going to be my pick as well. Definitely, I think, one of, if not the figurehead of the women's division in AEW. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Britt Baker takes this. So, of course, the winner of this will be the first number, the first of two number one contenders for the brand new, uh, the inaugural AEW Women's Championship, which will be competed for in week one of Wednesday Night Dynamite. So I'm going with Britt Baker here purely because she's, she's been in uh, a lot of uh, uh, stand-up uh, conferences with Brandy Rhodes and other members of the elite to promote all elite wrestling. So she's already kind of a figurehead of the promotion, certainly from the women's side of things. Um, so I think that they've got a, a, a lot invested in Britt Baker already. Uh, other possibilities, Awesome Kong, Aja Kong, two big individuals there that stand a good chance and probably will be in the final three, four, five. Um, and Nyla Rose, um, another woman within the division that AEW are definitely investing in and uh, somebody that uh, could stand a chance. It wouldn't surprise me if it comes down to Nyla Rose and Britt Baker as the final two. Two names that are exclusive to AEW nowadays that the brand are definitely investing in and getting behind. But I, my pick is Britt Baker to win the Battle Royal and to be the first number one contender for the AEW Women's Championship. And of course, that match will uh, be taking place on week one of Wednesday Night Dynamite, 2nd of October. Going into the main show, so the first match I want to talk about is a uh, six-man tag. You've got SoCal Uncensored. Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky, and Christopher Daniels, of course, going up against Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt. So I like the look of this match, and it wouldn't surprise me if this match kicks off the main card, the main show. Um, I, I like the... It's not really a comedy team of Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt. You've kind of got Jungle Boy and his pet dinosaur, Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus is huge. Luchasaurus is, it looks great. He's got a great body... Great physique, the tattoos, the mask. Jungle Boy, uh, a much smaller competitor, definitely capable in the ring. Um, knows his way around the ring, and uh, I, I like him. He's, he's a great cruiserweight wrestler. Uh, but I think that Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus are also going to be taking part in um, OWE UK's tag team tournament, which is taking place in September, I believe. Uh, tickets on sale now. Um, but uh, these two gel well together, having the smaller uh, wrestler and the, the larger um, tag team partner. So that uh, big and small dynamic has always worked well in tag team wrestling. A very fond memories of when Shawn Michaels used to tag with uh, Diesel uh, back in the mid-90s. And uh, Owen Hart and Yokozuna. I love the small and the large man dynamic. Going up against... Uh, so Cow Uncensored, so uh, Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky, Christopher Daniels, three guys that uh, know each other very well, that have been teaming for many, many years, and uh, th th su superb in the ring. Um, possibly three of the best individuals that were in Ring of Honor, and three of the best experienced and most accomplished wrestlers now in AEW. I might uh, kind of go against the grain here, but I'm going to go for a win for the good guys, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt, purely because I like the dynamic. I like the team. I like the individuals. Um, the addition of Marco Stunt there, I think he's shorter than I am, uh, but he can definitely work his way around the ring. And uh, I think with Luchasaurus and the smaller Jungle Boy Marco Stunt, he's going to be there as a bit of a launching pad for the other two to jump off of or for Luchasaurus to be launching them up in the air to attack uh, so Cal and Censored, who are going to be you know, fast on their feet. They've got some great moves. Um, I think Scorpio Sky um, could make uh, a really good career for himself, and I'm sure he will do, no doubt, in AEW as, uh, as, as a singles wrestler in the future. But uh, this match to kick off the show, definitely a thumbs up for me. Can't wait to see this one. Um, but I'm going for a, a good guy win, the Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt in this one. How about a bit of a bit of a hardcore match for one of a, a better phrase? Jimmy Havoc versus Darby Allen versus Joey Janela. So this is being billed as a uh, cracker barrel uh, blast. I think it's called. Cool. Let's just check here. Yes. Yeah, so um, 
This match came about after these three came to blows following their loss in a six-man tag uh, to the team of MJF and Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears uh, back at Fight for the Fallen. So last month, uh, with the the implosion of Havoc and Allen and Janela in a, in a backstage brawl, given us a three-way match that we have to, uh, on Saturday night, which has been described, yes, the Cracker Barrel Clash uh, which, considering the participants, is likely to turn into a bit of an all-out, uh, pun fully intended there, weapon field street fight, hardcore match. So, And of course, with any sort of three-way match, three-way brawl, uh, it's, it's kind of no rules. It's uh, anything goes. So you're definitely going to get that between these three individuals. There are a couple of uh, gimmick matches uh, to look forward to and all out, uh, but this one is definitely standing out as the match most likely to go into the crowd with a vast array of weapons um, and weird and wonderful gimmicks. So looking at some of the participants... Jimmy Havoc, first of all, is renowned for his years of brutal death matches against a collection of foes around the UK, most notably in progress. Um, not to mention his matches against Paul Robinson that would go down in history as some, being some of the bloodiest and barbaric matches you are likely to see in the modern era. Uh, you won't see Jimmy Havoc produce many dynamite or dynamic moves. He is definitely very capable in the ring as a, a former um, progress champion. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he did hold the record for being the longest progress wrestling world champion um, up until recently. And I think Walter has recently uh, overtaken Jimmy Havoc as the longest reigning progress champion. I could be wrong there. I'm sure somebody's going to correct me. Uh, but uh, you will see Jimmy produce many um, inventive ways to use a steel chair and uh, a cheese grater. And one of his weapons of choice, a staple gun, of course. May also remember that Jimmy Havoc stapling a lit cigarette to Joey Janela's forehead during the buy-in battle royal during the Double or Nothing pay-per-view in May. Speaking of Joey Janela, he has already had some standout moments since joining AEW. I've already mentioned Joey having the lit cigarette stapled to his forehead, courtesy of Mr. Havoc. Um, and, uh, yep, he was also part of the main event at Fighter Fest. Um, against John Moxley, of course, and uh, that that was the main event. It was a bit of a hardcore match, including plenty of tables and chairs and drawing pins to the feet. Yes, you heard me correctly. Uh, if you haven't seen that match, it was pretty interesting and brutal. And uh, yeah, the spot where John Moxley drops Joey Janela feet first, bare feet first, um, onto the drawing pins will live in my brain for a while. Um, but yes, John Moxley eventually put Joey Janela out of his misery with the dirty deeds onto the drawing pins and a hell of a hardcore match. Um, so Joey Janela has already made evented one of AEW's shows um, ahead of this Saturday's pay-per-view. Janela plays an excellent heel, um, but he's not to be sold short on his ability in the ring. With his ability to take a ton of punishment being his greatest attribute, in my opinion, uh, which will definitely play in his favour against Havoc and Darby Allen. That leaves Darby Allen, uh, the third and final competitor, the third and final wheel in this match, um, in this hardcore cracker barrel clash. Um, and the wrestler who we probably know the least about from the three. I've seen Alan wrestle on a couple of occasions, not live, uh, but certainly I've uh, done a lot of research and seen a lot of his matches on YouTube and whatnot. Uh, with uh, Darby Allen impressing me with his innovative array of moves. Uh, most like Havoc, Allen does everything with a purpose, uh, everything designed to injure his opponent, everything designed to, to hurt. Um, Darby has a vast array of dives and high flying moves and is well versed in rope work as well. I've seen him walk the ropes and do many moves um, off the ropes um, and, and lots of daredevil manoeuvres you'll see from Darby Allen on Saturday night. However, Darby Allen is also very versatile and is more than capable of delivering some submission holds, including his uh, one of his favourites, the guillotine. And uh, similar to Pete Dunne, he's got some finger snap uh, manoeuvres, some finger manipulation on his opponents as well. However, Darby Allen has taken uh, the coffin drop trust fall to a whole new level. You may remember Allen's uh, coffin drop that ended badly for uh, himself at Fighter Fest, finding nothing but ring apron during his time limit draw uh, with Cody prior to that chair shot uh, that Cody received from Sean Spears. So definitely Darby Allen's match against Cody is definitely a match to go out and watch from Fighter Fest if you haven't already seen it. 
I expect this match to uh, be a, a favourite of the fans. I think it, there is going to be a lot of action outside of the ring, possibly um, into the crowd, but it's, it's going to be a weapon-filled gimmick match, which each of these three wrestlers offering something fun and unique. All three have a lot to offer AEW in the long run, in my opinion. However, I believe that Darby Allen will walk away with this one, will walk away with a win. Yes, I'm predicting Darby Allen due to his exciting and very versatile and dynamic wrestling style. I can see uh, Darby Allen being a huge fan favourite in the future and can definitely see him in some brilliant matches with the likes of Kenny Omega and Pac and will be my pick in this match. Definitely one to watch there. So this next match I'm going to discuss is, is going to be quite interesting. It's uh, between Rihu and uh, Hakaru Shida. Now these two team together um, in the six-woman Joshi match at Double or Nothing in May. Now it is my understanding and kind of the rumour um, on the uh, Twitterverse, on the internet, is that this is the, the second number one contenders match. It's not been formally announced as a number one contenders match, but uh, with the first number one contender being... Uh, one through the women's 21 uh, women uh, casino battle royal in the buy-in part of the pay-per-view. This is expected to be announced as the second match uh, to uh, give us our, our next number one contender to go up against the winner of the women's casino battle royal. Uh, so these two were really impressive in the Joshi match. And I believe it was Shida that actually got the, the pinfall victory for her team um, back in May and uh, I know Kenny Omega is a huge proponent a huge fan and supporter of uh, Japanese women's wrestling of Joshi wrestling um, he was the one that champions bringing the Joshis to AEW and uh, we've seen Rihu in a few matches uh, for AEW uh, since May um, and uh, this match is going to be outstanding. So you've got two of the best Japanese talents coming to the US to fight on this AEW pay-per-view. And I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Bring in, um, bring in the fire that the Joshis uh, can do. Uh, with this one, I predict... Um, I know Rihu has had a bit more of the limelight in AEW since Double or Nothing. Um, but I'm going for... Um, Hikaru Shida in this one. I believe that she is uh, the, the better of the two wrestlers, the more accomplished of the two, and I think that she will pick up the win and she will go up against potentially Britt Baker um, on uh, the, the first ever TNT Wednesday Night Dynamite on October the 2nd to see who our first ever AW Women's World Champion is going to be. Then we've got the best friends, Chucky T and Trent Beretta, going up against the Dark Order. Now, this one also has a little bit of a ramification with the winner of this match receiving a first-round bye in the AEW Tag Team Tournament, uh, which kicks off, I think, on week two or week three of Wednesday Night Dynamite. Um, so it'll either be on the 9th or the 16th of October. Um, as much as I like Chucky T and Trent Beretta, um, I think the Dark Order is the tag team that the company, uh, or one of the tag teams that the company is going to be getting behind. They have a unique look, a unique gimmick, a unique style. Um, and uh, we first saw them, of course, when they interfered in the Best Friends versus Angelico and Jack Evans match at Double or Nothing in May, uh, where they uh, attacked the Best Friends after the match. In a rather bizarre, um, <laughs> bizarre series of events, um, where they had minions coming out and the lights going on and off, and yeah, it just seemed a little bit, um, a little bit haphazard, shall we say? So hopefully, uh, their act is a little bit more polished, or certainly the the, the guy that's doing the lighting cues uh, knows when to turn the light on this time. Uh, but I'm going for the dark order to win and get the buy in, or get the buy. And not the buy-in, but to get the buy in the first round of the tag team tournament. That's kind of like a gimmick for heels anyway, for heel teams uh, to get a buy to the next round. Not the sort of thing that you'd see babyface teams get a buy usually. So I'm expecting a dark order to uh, overcome the best friends in this one. Then um, one of the highlights of the night, I'm sure, will be the Lucha Brothers versus the Young Bucks. And it's going to be a ladder match for the uh, AAA Tag Team Championship. So this match will no doubt be on many people's lists um, of the most anticipated match of the show, with the Lucha Brothers going into the show as AAA Tag Team Champions. Um, unlike when they went into Double or Nothing in May, when the Bucks were the champions and uh, left as the champions as well, the 
biggest difference this time around is the inclusion of the ladders, of course. Now, I know that the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers are... Um, very familiar with using ladders in the match they are uh, no strangers to ladder matches um, but it will be a welcome addition to this match between these two two of the best let's be honest best and dynamic tag teams in the world right now we have had a scare over the last week or so with ray phoenix uh, one half of the Lucha Brothers, of course, having to be helped to the back in a match um, when he was wrestling with his brother uh, pentagon jr uh, for big time wrestling on Friday night. Uh, with initial fears and initial thoughts being a possible broken leg. It, it wasn't. It was later reported that Phoenix uh, did not suffer any broken bones. But was seriously injured. Uh, but he wrestled again the following night. And once again alongside his brother Pentagon Jr. And uh, with all reports stating that Phoenix had to be helped to the back. For the second night's running. To the very best of my knowledge, Ray Phoenix will be competing on Saturday night, Saturday night alongside his brother, Pentagon Jr., to take on the Young Bucks in this championship ladder match. Uh, but I do not expect Ray Phoenix to be 100% fit. How could he be if he suffered a serious leg injury just seven or eight days earlier? Saying that, I still expect this match to be one of the uh, a great one and to be one of the better matches on the card uh, in amongst many, many great matches. The limitations of Ray Phoenix will play a part in the end of this match with the Young Bucks winning the match uh, in what will be a true highlight of the night and of the pay-per-view as a whole, with the championship being regained by the Young Bucks, in my opinion. However, we must remember that there will be the AEW Tag Team Championship Tournament, which will be fought for during the first uh, three to four episodes of Wednesday Night Dynamite, and it won't surprise me to see these two teams in contention for that gold as well. As for Saturday night, I'm going for the Young Bucks, as I've already said, and what will be an ultra-fast-paced, very physical ladder match. Um, if all participants are fit and healthy, um, and uh, by that I mean Ray Phoenix, uh, then this match should steal, or could very well steal, the show. Sean Spears versus Cody Rhodes. So, um, also on the first edition of... The road to all out. JR, Jim Ross, sat down with Sean Spears. In that interview, JR asked Sean Spears why he smashed Cody Rhodes in the side of the head with a steel chair at Fighter Fest in June. Uh, Spears explained that uh, he considered Cody to be within his inner circle of friends uh, by choice and uh, whom he trusted within that inner circle. Spears said that there are certain things you don't say to a friend and certainly certain things you don't say in the wrestling industry and you don't say that somebody is a good hand and uh, he said that Cody, Cody Rhodes has changed now having the vice president moniker coming in wearing a suit everywhere he goes and calling a fellow wrestler a good hand is not something you say to someone you consider to be a friend. Spears calls uh, Cody um, a leech and uh, that Cody has used people throughout his career to get to where he is today and uh, used the steel... He, Sean Spears said he used the steel chair to remind Cody that he bleeds the same colour as himself. Sean Spears has associated himself with former four horsemen Tully Blanchard, of course, who Spears um, is looking to as a mentor, who will be in Sean Spears' corner at All Out on Saturday night. Uh, Tully himself said that uh, he's being brought in to help Spears out, and he knows that Ro the Rhodes family better than anybody, having had a lengthy and well-documented feud with Dusty Rhodes alongside the rest of the four horsemen back in the 80s. The pairing of Sean Spears and Tully Blanchard is a masterstroke, in my opinion. It makes perfect sense when you factor in Tully's history with the Rhodes family. But the question is, if Tully Blanchard is going to be in Sean Spears' corner on Saturday night, then who is likely to be in Cody's corner? Could we see his brother Dustin? Now, Dustin is not uh, uh, in any featured matches. He's not been announced for any matches at all for All In on Saturday night. So the obvious answer might be Dustin Rhodes. Cody's brother is going to be in his corner on Saturday night. That would make perfect sense as far as I'm concerned. And possibly the most likely um, corner man for Cody. What about MJF? Now, surprisingly, MJF is not in any matches or certainly has been announced for any matches for All In on Saturday night. And uh, um, MJF came out to help Cody 
to the back after the steel chair shot from Sean Spears at Fight for the Fallen. And uh, although MJF has always been considered a bit of a, a cocky, arrogant uh, heel, he kind of came across as a bit of a babyface there when he supported Cody Rhodes and uh, helped him to the back. Now, I'm wondering if MJF is going to be in Cody's corner, whether we could see MJF turn on Cody, possibly setting up a bit of a feud between those two. Obviously, in this match, Sean Spears is going in as the heel. So if MJF is going to be cornering Cody, then uh, you kind of got to see MJF certainly as a, as a baby face on this occasion. I think that deep down, he possibly is a bit of a fan favourite. Um, he, he's full of wisecracks and excellent promos for any opponent and any crowd that he's in front of, and uh, certainly one of the best promo guys in the business at the moment, at such a young age, um, and uh, a future world champion in my opinion, um, if nothing else, for his, his character and his uh, mic work, which is second to none, which makes him one of the best heels in the business. Um, but uh, yes, the last time we saw him was in the corner, or helping Cody to the back, which makes him a babyface in my opinion, and if he is the corner man for Cody in this match... I wouldn't be surprised to see MJF possibly turn on Cody, um, which could align him with Sean Spears, MJF that is, and uh, um, could possibly set up a a feud with uh, Cody. However, if Sean Spears has a former four horsemen in his corner, then why can't Cody have a former four horsemen in his corner too? Remember, Arn Anderson now works for AEW. Now, I know that he's recently uh, left the WWE with a severance package that supposedly prevents him from any on-screen role, any on-screen activity or any sort of action. So having Arn Anderson in an on-screen role in Cody's Corner on Saturday night is unlikely, but a possibility. Um, And, of course, Four Horsemen always stick together. So although Arn Anderson might come out initially in Cody's Corner, Um, there could also be a situation where Arn might turn on Cody and realign himself with Tully Blanchard. But like I say, that's possibly the least likely out of the three outcomes between Dustin Rhodes, MJF or Arn Anderson being the corner man uh, for Cody. We all remember Dustin Rhodes and Cody having their match of the year contender in AEW's inaugural pay-per-view Double or Nothing back in May with Cody taking the victory after their epic match that saw Dustin bleed profusely in a match that would go down as Cody and Dustin's greatest ever match. In my opinion, I do believe it was honestly uh, Cody and Dustin's greatest match that they've ever had, and they had it together. And not only was that a great match for all the physical and athletic happenings in the ring, it was an emotional and a very engaging match, full of psychology and storytelling, um, and... uh, Young up-and-coming wrestlers that are looking to get into the business should watch this match over and over as a lesson for how to piece together a great wrestling match. And of course, Dustin and Cody teamed together as they took on the Young Bucks at Fight for the Fallen last month. In my opinion, this match can only have one ending. And if this match does have a clean finish, which I'm hoping it does, that winner has to be Sean Spears. We all know that Sean Spears formerly known as Ty Dillinger back in the WWE, was not utilised very well in the WWE. Um, He was in developmental system in the WWE or NXT for well over 10 years. Um, And uh, he did finally hit upon a winning gimmick with the Ty Dillinger 10 gimmick, um, but it was never fully utilised to its full potential, especially when he was moved up to the main roster um, a couple of years ago. This is AEW's chance to develop a new star, Uh, with a win for Spears here, doing a lot more for his future, whereas a win for Cody could be needless at this stage in his career, and a loss for Cody would not be detrimental at all, in my opinion. It won't hurt Cody one bit. In fact, a loss for Cody would set up a a more lengthy feud, potentially, between these two, uh, going into the weekly uh, TV show on TNT from October, possibly leading to a big blow-off between these two to cap off an episode of Wednesday Night Dynamite, or whatever the next AW pay-per-view is in the future. This will be a great match to look forward to on Saturday night, um, and uh, yes, certainly up there with one of the matches I'm looking forward to the most. 
Probably the match that I'm looking forward to the most, though, is Kenny Omega versus John Moxley. Correction, it's no longer John Moxley. It's now Pack, which ups the ante, in my opinion, and uh, gives us a better match as wrestling fans. So, just to recap, um, as we're all no doubt fully aware, this match was really meant, originally meant to be John Moxley versus Kenny Omega, uh, which came about after Moxley made his shocking first appearance since leaving the WWE at the end of the main event of Double or Nothing to attack Omega, uh, culminating in Moxley delivering a devastating DDT to Omega on top of the giant stack of poker chips on the stage to end the show. However, after Moxley suffered an elbow injury in a match during the G1 Climax a couple of weeks ago, Moxley has since contracted MRSA, um, which will need to be operated on. I believe he's already had the operation, or if he hasn't, he's going to very, very soon. Thus, Moxley uh, notifies us all uh, late last week that would be pulling out of the match against Omega. However, by early Saturday, we all learned that Pac would be his replacement to take on Kenny Omega at All Out, leading us to believe that Pac was going to be involved in some way, shape or form in the show or possibly in this match anyway, which is why um, he could be slotted in to this match so quickly following Moxley's injury. Many people are saying that Pac versus Omega will be a better match, and I definitely believe that it will be as well. A dream match in many people's opinion. And as I said, I am uh, definitely a fan of... Of Mox, uh, but the inclusion of Pack makes this uh, match even more of a must-see. And in my personal opinion, this will be the match that I'm most looking forward to. In many people's opinion, Kenny Omega is still the best wrestler in the world. But because we haven't seen much of him in 2019 compared to um, the, the many dates that he would have wrestled under the New Japan banner... Uh, this will be an opportunity for him to prove once again how great he is and that he is still the best in the world. And here against Pac, we could possibly see one of the matches of the night, possibly match of the year contender right here. Omega, of course, lost Jericho at double or nothing. So he's got a bit to prove. However, he was victorious against Chima at Fight for the Fallen. And uh, alongside the Young Bucks, defeated the Lucha Brothers and Laredo Kid at Fight Fest in June. So Kenny is two for one in his three matches under the AEW banner. Personally, I'd like to see Pac win this one. However... With the limited build that these two have had, um, it makes sense to have the more established star win this one. Uh, with that, I'm going with Kenny Omega for the win. However, I'm just looking forward to watching uh, this one in all of its glory. Another reason I'm going for Kenny Omega is because I can see him being a clear number one contender for the AEW World Championship after the main event between Adam Page and Chris Jericho. So I'm going for Chris Jericho over Pac on Saturday. Um, and I do think that that could potentially push him up the ranks to be the automatic number one contender. Then on to our main event. The aforementioned Hangman. Adam Page versus Chris Jericho. So Adam Page won his right to compete in this championship match by winning the buy-in battle royal um, during the, the pre-show of Double or Nothing back in May, of course. Chris Jericho earned his right by beating Kenny Omega in the main event of Double or Nothing back in May. Then a masked Chris Jericho attacked Adam Page after his victory against uh, Superbad Chris Kip Sabian at Fight for the Fall of last month, badly cutting open Adam Page above the left eye from what appeared to be a botched code breaker. However, after a, a ripping on Page in front of the fans on the mic, um, the hangman jumped back into the ring to attack Jericho, further setting up this match uh, for the AEW World Championship. In episode one of The Road to All Out, Adam Page gave us a very impassioned promo, telling us how he thanked uh, Chris Jericho for attacking him at Fight for the Fallen. Thanks for the black eye and thanks for the stitches, and that all that stands between him and becoming the first ever AEW World Champion is a little bit of blood. Page goes on to tell us that Jericho should be afraid of him and should be afraid of losing to him. Page goes on and tells us that on September the 1st, when he looks in the mirror, he'll be looking back at himself as the World Champion. So many people are calling Hangman Page one of the hottest prospects in all of pro wrestling at the moment, regardless of promotion. He's had uh, the interest of all the promotions. WWE obviously wrestled formerly for Ring of Honor New Japan uh, before AEW was formally created in early 2019. He's been part of the elite uh, and uh, the Bullet Club before that. In my opinion, Adam Page has all of the features of a world beater. 
and a future world champion, of course. He has a great look, is very athletic, and is very good on the mic. As demonstrated in his uh, road to All Out segments in the lead up to this pay per view, um, I will even go out on limb to say that he will be a figurehead of professional wrestling and of AEW uh, in the next five years and will be a future AEW world champion. A future champion, but not the first AEW world champion. There are still many unanswered questions about this match that will be answered on Saturday night. Could we see uh, any member of the elite come out to support and possibly get involved in this match to counter whatever tactics um, the very heelish Chris Jericho has up his sleeve? I honestly believe that uh, the, the, the honour of being the first ever AEW world champion will go to Chris Jericho. As a wrestler, Chris Jericho is past his prime. I think uh, we all need to be honest and admit that. Uh, but as an all-round performer and as a character, he has everything. And is possibly the best heel in the business right now. More than anything, he has the best name value, the biggest name value of anyone on the AEW roster. So it makes sense, um, you know, for those reasons alone, I believe um, to make him the first of AEW world champion. I'm also a, a firm believer that you need to have a heel as the champion, um, certainly your first champion. In this case, the first champion, so that you have a compelling storyline with a babyface chasing the title. And with Jericho as its first ever world champion, that gives AEW the perfect story going into their new weekly TV show. Wednesday Night Dynamite from the 2nd of October. Hangman Page will be the AEW World Champion, but not on Saturday night, in my opinion. Whoever wins this match will uh, be defending their newly won AEW Championship on week three of Wednesday Night Dynamite. So if Jericho does win, then you could either see a rematch between Jericho and Adam Page, or we might get a rematch from Double or Nothing between Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega, um, with the title on the line, of course. However, one of the big questions that uh, is currently unanswered is with it taking place in Chicago. With Chicago made CM Punk being in the area, of course he's going to be one of the main attractions at StarCast 3 over the weekend, taking place over All Out weekend of course, just as StarCast 1 did um, for All In last summer. And, of course, just as StarCast 2 did for Double or Nothing in uh, Las Vegas in May, CM Punk, he is going to be at StarCast 3. We, we've known that for, for a while now. We know that AEW reached out to CM Punk to see if he'd be interested in signing with AEW. And uh, CM Punk has publicly said that uh, he has had contact with AEW, but uh, turned down their offer. So whether that's a ruse, whether that's CM Punk trying to pull the wool over our eyes or not, we know that CM Punk is going to be in the area. Um, he's going to be in Chicago uh, over the, the weekend of StarCast 3 and, more importantly, AEW All Out. Will he show up? Does he even want to get back into the wrestling game? If so, when are we likely to see him? Could we possibly see him at the end of the main event between Adam Page and Chris Jericho? Could we possibly see him at the end of any of the matches on Saturday night? Maybe uh, Pac versus Kenny Omega. Maybe um, at the end of M uh, Sean Spears and Cody, of course. My gut instincts, if I'm honest with you, uh, tells me that I don't think CM Punk will be showing up on Saturday night. And in fact, I don't think he'll show up in a wrestling ring ever again. I think uh, he's uh, drawn a line uh, underneath ever wanting to get back into the squared circle. Um, so I'll be very, very surprised if we see him on Saturday night or in a wrestling ring again in the future. Um, I think he's got his sights set on possibly doing commentating or presenting, um, but possibly not on wrestling. So, that's all of the matches discussed. It's going to be one hell of a show, we know that. Uh, the buy-in with the match between Private Party uh, versus... Now, who were Private Party going up against? Uh, Private Party versus Angelico and Jack Evans, of course. And, of course, the 21-woman casino Battle Royal will be taking place on the uh, the, the buy-in, which uh, I believe takes place from midnight um, on uh, Saturday the 31st going into Sunday the 1st of September. Uh, 
with the main show starting at 1 a.m. UK time. Um, I, I, now that I've kind of gone through all of the matches, I'm even more hyped. I'm even more excited for the show itself. Um, we know that this coming weekend is going to be one hell of a stacked weekend. You've obviously uh, got uh, New Japan in the UK for the Raw Quest show. On Friday night, you've got Rev Pro with their Summer Sizzler. On Saturday night, I've already mentioned you've got NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff taking place at the Motor Point Arena in Cardiff. And then, of course, over in Chicago in the States, you've got AEW's second pay-per-view all out. So, don't forget to join me and Ash and Chris Thornton on Sunday afternoon, where we'll be reviewing, uh, giving you a full recap of all the matches to have taken place at AEW all out. Um, and uh, now that I've given you my predictions, uh, I'm even more excited for the show, and I'm even more excited to review the show uh, AW All Out on Sunday afternoon with Ash and Chris. Join me again tomorrow, uh, Friday, the 30th of August, uh, where I'll be joined by Kieran Reed. We'll recap this week's NXT and NXT UK, and it'll be our go home episode, as I mentioned earlier, for NXT UK Takeover Cardiff. We'll give you all of our thoughts and predictions and preview um, all of the matches that will be taking place in Cardiff on Saturday night. Um, and then, of course, um, I'll be going to take over Cardiff on Saturday and we'll be giving you a full rundown, a full review, a full recap with David Anderson on Sunday afternoon as well. So stay tuned to the Wrestling with Johnners podcast. Keep it tuned to the Wrestling with Johnners podcast for all of your weekly AW, NXT, NXT UK and WWE updates. And if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, please don't forget to spread the word. Tell your friends and tell your family and keep it tuned to the Wrestling with Johnners podcast. So I hope you enjoy AEW All Out. Uh, don't forget to join us tomorrow for our um, Road to NXT UK Takeover Cardiff show. And of course on Sunday we've got two podcasts dropping. The AEW All Out review show and the NXT UK Takeover Cardiff review show. So lots happening on the Wrestling with Johnners podcast. Lots to stay tuned uh, with and listen to on the Wrestling with Johnners podcast. In the meantime... I hope you all have a fantastic weekend uh, full of wrestling action from NXT UK, from AEW, from Rev Pro, from New Japan. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. If you're a wrestling fan, you're going to have an amazing weekend. So have a great weekend. Keep it tuned to Wrestling with Johnners, and we'll speak to you all soon.